confess the word and allow the Holy Spirit to do a faith work in them. To believe God for what he says and speak. And as they speak, they see the result and they speak with authority and with the power. Believing that God watches over his word. At the point that he was seeing death, he was still able to say, Father, forgive them. So it doesn't matter how much you've been hurt, betrayed, and somebody did something wrong. It doesn't matter how painful you feel. Jesus did it all and he forgave you. So you have to forgive. That is very, very important. And it's one thing that when we recite this prayer, we never think about it. Forgive me my debts as I have for, forgiven others. It is important for you to understand that fact and let it sink in your spirit. And so you cannot forgive without bearing with one another. People will always make mistakes. They will offend you. Even today, I know you can't lie to yourself that nobody offended you. Even when you are driving on the road, people offend you. Somebody cuts across you. And he will not give you the way. Somebody knows you have the right of the way. And he's just flashing at you. He wants you to keep up and go off the road and tear off your car. He doesn't care. He'll get offended. Or some things did not happen to you as you expected and planned it. So each one of us, each day, we are offended. But you have to for, for bear with one another. And that's why Paul tests the church in Colossae. He says, bearing one another, forgiving one another. If any one has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. He said, it doesn't matter. When you have something against somebody, bear with him, but you have to forgive. And forgiveness does not mean that you don't say the truth. There are those who do, do as much evil, and they'll continue to do it. And in this world, Many say, and do manner of evil against us. Somebody's just undermining you. And you know you are the boss. And you know very well that he does undermine you. And here you don't want to forgive you. In this world, people do evil against us. That we know, and some that we don't know. Under the table. And some don't care. Some are just bored to make sure that they offend you. But you have to forgive. Sometimes, terrible evil is committed by the word and act both within the church and within the person's family. Even the church family, there's sometimes things that happen that you wonder, why did this thing happen? People don't care. So I'm going to live in unforgiveness. Listen to me. The more you live in unforgiveness, you bind yourself and lose others. I don't want to be bound. Neither do you want to be bound. Think with me. Any moment you live in unforgiveness, you'll be struggling, even in your finances, in your relationship. Whatever you do, you'll be struggling. But the moment you come to understand that I must forgive, then you lose yourself. And you'll see the goodness of God. God will open doors. God will shower you with blessings that you'll have nowhere to, to put and to contain it. Why? Because you'll be favored by God. There are certain principles in God's word that you must do whether you like it or not. And so there are some who do as evil. Look at Matthew chapter number 5. Look at verse 39 to, 30, uh, to 44. There are some things I want you to see here. Okay, it says, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. Oh, continue. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. This is Jesus talking. You know, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Whatever comes out of his mouth becomes a law because he rules by decree. And then verse 41, he says, And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Verse 42, he says, Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. So in other words, Jesus is saying, 
you know very well this man, this woman has been hard on you, has done bad things and evil to you, maybe to your family. But sometimes it comes to ask you for a favor. Are you going to say, I'm not going to do it? When you do that, you are stopping your blessing. 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Watch this. 43. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Something that when you read, you say, uh-uh, it is difficult. But that is the spiritual law. And when you do it as you pray, you know, it wasn't just reciting, forgive us our debts. It was deeper than that because you follow up the teachings of Jesus on forgiveness. Then you get the understanding that it was not just an ordinary prayer that is recited. It is deeper than what you think. Look at what happened. He says, some smite us, some despitefully use us. Some hate us, some compel us against our will, some sue us, some curse us, some persecute us, some spread rumors about us. There is nothing as, as painful as knowing that somebody is spreading rumor about you. And you know that, you know that, you know. I don't know about you, but I've experienced that it's so painful when somebody just heaps lie on you. And rumors that are not true. And with this era of social media, sometimes you wonder whether people are really sane or insane. They put things there which they have not verified. And it is trending and trending because some people make money out of it. Listen to me. God is watching. And it doesn't matter what has been said about you. Let them spread the rumor. So when you look at Matthew chapter 5, the same that we read, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 11. Some spread rumors about you. What do you say? Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Hallelujah. When you are a child of God, Jesus bought you by his own blood. You believed in him. And he made you be a child of God. Jesus is making a statement that blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Glory be to God. So don't worry, don't care what they do. God is going to avenge you. And I want you to know that it doesn't matter what people do. You have to forgive because it's a principle. It's a spiritual law. And so when you recite deep prayer, don't just recite it. It's a mental thing. It's spiritual deep. And it has a lot. Because it's a prayer that teaches you how to pray. So the Lord's prayer is not just to be recited because we are ending a service or because we are beginning a service or whatever time you do recite it. It is deeper than what you think. And I'm glad you tuned in to learn more. Look at Romans chapter number 12. Let me show you something. When people talk all manner and spread rumors about you, give it to God. Let go and let God. Give it to God. Romans chapter number 12 verse 17. He said, Repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Verse 19. He said, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Say amen to that. And you are listening to me. You have been bitter all your life because somebody did something wrong to you. As a young girl, as a young boy, Listen, vigilance belongs to God. So what, what must you do as a believer when things like this happen? You must understand that there is always a reason why a person sins against a believer. Ask God for wisdom to deal with whatever, whoever sins against you. 
there must be a reason you must ask yourself why is this one happening to me now you must ask God the Bible says in Romans 11 12 that he who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor but a man of understanding holds his peace Christ says we must not react but we must forgive we must forgive if we wish to be forgiven it's a must you it's a must you must forget not to harbor the wrong that is done to you and that's a principle it doesn't matter what happened you must forget you must forbear and don't keep the wrong uh, Philippians 4 13 say brethren I do not count myself I like this I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead so forgiveness makes you push things up behind and you press toward the good things ahead God has good things for you and as a matter of fact when you forgive you propel yourself into victory into your blessings into your favor to move and walk in the grace of God and for God to open doors for you in the moment you begin to have things done to you that you know they are wrong then you won't be able to make it because you will be holding yourself binding yourself and you have to put them behind it doesn't matter how painful it is you have to put them behind and I've talked with many Christians and what is killing us as believers is unforgiveness and many times when you teach this topic people say it's hard Bishop it's hard it's not hard why because forgiveness is all about me giving up my right to hurt you for hurting you so I don't need to hurt you because you hurt me and an unforgiveness spirit causes pain and hurt and tragedy both to oneself and others it can ruin lives of those closest and dearest to oneself so when you don't forgive I want you to note that this is very very important as we conclude we can cast ourselves by praying the Lord's prayer we are in trouble when praying the Lord's prayer if we are angry and do not forgive those who sin against us you are bringing a curse to yourself and I hope you've been blessed by this and so when you say amen after you pray you are saying amen and you're making a commitment because amen means be it according to your word and let it happen according to the word that you have spoken and are we not ending this prayer always with amen for thine is the king the power the glory forever and ever amen and so it says let it be so